turned into passion over a, a number of years. Um, it used to just be something to fill some time in the evenings. And then I got more and more interested in different techniques. Um, in the 1980s, um, knitting had a huge resurgence and I did quite a lot then. And then I didn't knit for a while and it was only really um, about 10 or 12 years ago that I started knitting again and I found that I was actually better than I thought I was at her and there were um, knitting had come on a long way and there were some beautiful patterns and beautiful yarns so I did another garment and another garment and something else and something else and it just crept up on me until it was something that I was doing quite a lot in my spare time. And then I discovered that there was so much out there on the internet and knitting groups, and that, I think, really solidified it as some really serious hobby for me. There's forums and blogging where you can make really, really quite genuine friendships and interact with people just by putting what you love doing out there, and other like-minded people will look at it and you can look at their things. It's really very positive. I think there's been a more interest in traditional crafts generally and um, more value put on um, the skills to create things and uh, knitting is a very easy skill to learn um, and can take a lifetime to master but it's very easy to learn and get going. Quite often I get questions on my blog sort of oh I'm stuck with doing so and so I'm making the same garment as you how did you handle this piece and you know you get a conversation going with people and you know, a couple of months later you get a photo email to yourself and you've got some pride that I helped with that, I helped that person make that thing. So it is um, another rewarding part of the process. I'm a member of the Bromley Guilty Knitters. We're a group that started about eight years ago. I think there's about 12 of us uh, who knit most Sunday mornings. We turn up, buy coffee, knit help each other with problems with our knitting. Um, no matter what you've done wrong, there's somebody always there who can help out. It's become a very big part of my life from something that I would just go along occasionally. I've made a wonderful group of very, very good friends um, over the years there. Susan is uh, an excellent knitter. She is uh, she's somebody I would aspire to knit like and I probably will never achieve because she is very, very competent. She's very skilled. She's an extremely quick knitter and she's the go-to person if I get stuck. She's very generous with her time and has the biggest stash of anybody I've ever met. She could open a wool shop in her home. It's so huge. So it's, it's lovely having her here because you know there's somebody who will always know the answer to a query. She always likes to try a challenge. So she always, uh, if something's really difficult, somebody says, oh, this pattern's impossible, she'll go and try it. <laughs> and she also has a very big stash, which we always laugh about. So yeah, it's nice to have Susan in. She's very helpful also when it gets problems. We're guilty knitters because we all carry um, an element of guilt about our knitting. Um, I'm perpetually guilty because I've got way too much yarn in my stash that I haven't knit. So I'm always trying to knit my way through my stash and failing miserably. Um, there are other people who are guilty because they've promised to knit something for someone and they haven't finished it yet and they've missed the birthday. Um, there are other people who are guilt feel guilty because they were knitting and they didn't bother cooking their husband their dinner, you know. <laughs> so we, we came up with a list of about 20 reasons why you could be a guilty knitter. Um, if you ask any knitter, there's some level of guilt with it, but you work through it. I think most knitters have a tendency to love the yarn and buy uh, more than they actually need. There are some who are very good at using up all the scraps, um, but it's part of the pleasure of the hobby is going into the shop and squishing the balls of yarn and drawing over the beautiful colours and buying some just because you want to own it. I think that's something which um, any hobby can be guilty of, that you buy more than you actually use. I mean, certainly my husband with his video games and board games buys more than he can actually play. I definitely am guilty of buying more yarn than I can knit. And there are certain yarns that I just can't resist buying. I, if, if I see them in a sale, I just have to have more because I might need that colour and it's being sold off and discontinued. And I think 
Addiction and obsession are two strong words. Um, they've kind of slipped into misuse in English. Um, but it's definitely um, a very strong interest. <laughs> I'm very lucky that um, I have a job which um, pays me enough to keep me in yarn and I can keep my habit up um, without having to go hungry to buy more yarn. So. For me, it definitely is. Um, there's um, all sorts of different levels of excitement. I mean, I'm a show off, so there's the joy of finishing something and putting it on my blog um, or showing it to my friends or showing it to someone at work who's sort of like, oh, you didn't make that, did you? Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> um, it's great fun. Um, I enjoy the actual process of it and finding all the beautiful yarns and, you know, choosing what colour beads to put with it. There's so many different levels of pleasure to have with it. And then at the end of all that lovely creative process, you've got a beautiful thing to have in your house or to wear. It's, um, it keeps on giving. You could go and buy a pair of socks for a pound and they'd be perfectly good socks, but the, the pleasure of actually sitting and making them um, is something else and wearing something that you know you've made. Susan's an excellent knitter, and I'm not just saying that because um, she's my wife. I can I can tell some of the things she knits are extremely advanced um, patterns, and seeing that she's brought friends over here and teaching them to knit, and you know her her level of expertise is is well beyond the average knitter. So she's a she's a very very skilled knitter, and she's very prolific. She knits a lot, and yeah, I'm, I'm always very impressed with what she's doing. The balance um, for us, for Ben and I. Um, Ben plays console games, um, video games, and has his own hobbies. So if he wants to use the TV and his shooting little green men, he can be playing quite happily and I will be um, sitting next to him doing a complicated project and paying more attention to that. You know, the two can coexist. You know, we can still spend time together and uh, in the evenings we're we'll still sort of participating in our own hobbies. There's a lot of debate if you uh, are a gamer like Ben whether you should go off and have a separate room to play your games. But if you start pursuing your hobbies in separate rooms, you may as well not be married. You're spending all your free time apart. So we do make an effort to spend our time together and in the same room, sharing each other's hobbies. As bad as I am for buying yarn and knitting things, he is for buying things for his hobbies. So we kind of keep a check on each other and there's a healthy balance in the marriage. Um, some of my friends that I talk to online, um, their husband is very disapproving of them going and spending more money on yarn. So it's smuggling the yarn into the house and, oh no, I've had this yarn for ages, you know, when you bring out the, the new yarn. So um, it can cause a lot of disquiet. I do like to make life difficult for me because I like the challenge and I get a buzz out of struggling and mastering a new skill. So it's part of the fun for me, learning new things all the time and uh, trying to sort of beat the hobby, if you like, that uh, there's this new complicated way of um, knitting something, I'm going to try that. I don't think so far there's anything that I've ever completely abandoned. I've always managed to master it, so it's um, it's quite good for my ego that I can just keep learning new things and uh, keep on building on my skills. I commute into central London for work on the train, so there's a half an hour on the train there and half an hour on the way back. So there's an hour a day that I sit on the train knitting um, with no distractions. So you can actually get quite a lot of knitting done in that time. I think as soon as you take a hobby that you love and you make it your living, you just change career and you lose a hobby. And I didn't want to ever make um, knitting into a chore because um, now when work is hard and I'm stressed at work, knitting is where I go and hide and it's my my pleasure and it's my where I sort of can curl up and where I can be happy and I would lose that if I turned knitting into my work so I just made the conscious decision not to do that. Plus I have an IT career that I've worked very hard at and uh, I'd quite like to keep that. I like to knit what I want to knit when I want to knit it and if I decide not to knit for a week that's fine. 
I don't have to answer to anyone. As soon as you start knitting and you have to do it, then it becomes quite a chore. It's horrible to sit there every night, hour after hour, knitting something you really don't like. I don't want to do that to myself. I think the key is to just start and if you don't know if you like knitting or if you like crocheting, you don't have to make a decision. You can chop and change at any point. It is a hobby. Um, there are no rules. So if you don't know if you like knitting, just start. Do some. Go to a class, go to a knitting group, pick up a pair of needles, knit something simple without a huge financial commitment or time commitment. And if you enjoy it, do something else. If you don't enjoy it, find you know, try crochet, try cross stitch, try making cakes, just keep experimenting, but don't just say, oh, I don't know, and sit there doing nothing. Just get stuck in and have a go. You might like it, you might not, and you might waste four or five hours and five pounds on a bowl of cheap yarn and cheap needles, but you might find a hobby that you absolutely adore.